you have a few hours yourself on your vacation to do a spiritual experience of floating inside a dome and looking out. Let's talk to some men about Pluto. There is a private mission to explore Pluto. Just a few days ago, the program manager of this came to me and he says, Bert, we want to send a Pluto on the first private deep space mission. God, it's hard to say this. We want to send a hundred grams of spaceship. What? Isn't that cool? <laughs> These kinds of things have been happening a lot the last few days. And it's hard to work and it's hard to sleep. A lot of proud people around here wanted to uh, sign with their name on Would you like to sign it? Sure. Uh, Steve, need the, uh, the gold marks. Mr. Allen can sign the nozzle. And I want okay. your signature in the cockpit. Right. So when it's displayed at the Air and Space Museum, it's still there and visible. I think every one of us wishes that we could be on that vehicle and fly this really challenging flight. This flight is what's going to get the attention of the world. This is the flight which says, hey, NASA, we're here. T-minus four hours and counting. After years of dreaming, Bert Rutan and the team at Scaled Composites hope today's flight will usher in a new age of space travel. As we briefed yesterday, try to get to flight 15 p off safely today, above 100 kilometers. Timeline, we're still trying to taxi at 6.30 out of here. Spaceship status. We had a thermal couple issue that we fixed, and the ox check, it's good to go now. Great, thank you. Propulsion time? Oh, we're uh, good to go, no issues. So what do you think? Very good. No nerves, right? Nerves of steel. Got yeah, me too. A little bit. <laughs> I have to believe that Bert knows what he's doing, that Jim Ty knows what he's doing, that Matt Steinmetz knows what he's doing. Those guys are, are brilliant engineers, and they have assured me it'll handle the speed, it'll handle the G, it'll handle the re-entry temperatures. See, I'm not an engineer. I actually am a high school dropout. So I can't make those calculations. For the biggest flight in his career, Mike draws his final inspiration from the man who hired him over 25 years ago. All of my flying career with Bert Rutan, with 10 first flights with him in airplanes that have never flown before, I've always had to believe what Bert tells me. I have to believe him 100% because if I have any doubts, I'm gonna get out and walk away. And for me, Bert Rutan, I don't know what to say. That man is unbelievable. He really is. He's, he's one of my best friends. He's never let me down, and I don't think I've ever let him down, and I don't intend to. Cool. This is the big one, Bert. Cool. Thanks so much for the opportunity. We got the right guy. Yeah, I think so. It's just an airplane. Don't worry about it. It looks pretty nice in here. It's not, not really an old airplane, is it? Yeah, you should just hop in the back. <laughs> should I do that right now? Yeah, he's going to have to hold on tight. There's no seatbelts on that. He's scared, and he admits it. Test pilots do that right up to the launch. Yeah. And then, they, and then after that, there, there's no fear because right. you have tasks to do. Everything was just kind of going normal, and you're sitting there in front of the hangar, and yeah, there's a hundred people around, but nothing different. And I thought, boy, this is the only people that showed up for this, is these few hundred people here. And we kind of rounded the, the tower, turning the corner onto whatever taxiway that is, and just the windows in the white night filled up full of people, and I thought, oh my God, there's thousands and thousands of people just filled up the windows on the airplane, so that was breathtaking. Holy smokes! Holy smokes! We look at that, and it's only gonna get bigger. 
As Spaceship One and White Knight head toward the stars, 12,000 admirers draw forward in anticipation. I feel like I'm at Kitty Hawk. It's like being at the Wright Brothers at a new stage. Uh -huh. Dreamers of all ages have their hopes riding skyward with Spaceship One. I'd like to go into space. I want to ride. I want to go now. <laughs> I've been waiting for over 40 years for this. When we stopped going to the moon 30 years ago, I was disappointed and upset then. So I'm glad to see Private Enterprise getting into the game and doing it themselves. Last chance. Anybody? Okay. The historic flight of Spaceship One begins. Suddenly, a problem. As Spaceship One rolls to the left, Mike tries a new method for correcting his course. The wind shear and or me overcorrecting cause the airplane to roll 95 degrees to the right. Trying to get level, he overcorrects. So then it rolled 90 degrees left. And I very nearly shut it down, because, I mean, you feel like you're pointing back at the ground at that point. Auto symmetry. <laughs> Way off course, Mike finally manages to get the ship under control and vertical. Looking good. Okay, 30 seconds coming. Very rough ride initially. Copying. Little nose up trim. 45 seconds, slightly low energy, doing okay? Yeah, a lot of pitching. Struggling to escape gravity's grasp, the rocket motor wails. As Spaceship One drifts further from Earth, Mike's isolation is aggravated by mysterious noises from the ship. I had at least three different pieces go out the back that caused bangs, and one of them was very large, the other two were much smaller. I didn't know what that explosion was. It just was a mental strain on me because I honestly thought that the spaceship had, had lost a major part of itself. Unsure of the condition of his craft, Mike raises the feather and continues his ascent as planned. Yeah, the engine didn't run very well. Doing okay, Mike? Doing fine, I'm trying to get it up right. Wow, well, you would not believe the view. Holy mackerel. Doing a really good job with the RCS. Approaching the top of his climb, Mike appears to be in perfect position. Okay, everything is good here, Doug. Okay, copy that. In fact, his wild ride left Mike over 20 miles off target, calling into question whether he made it into space to...